taking daily weather observations, checking the rain gauge and measuring the precipitation, recording the high, low, and current temperatures. They're common tasks for those involved with weather forecasting, but for a cooperative observer located to our east in Bridgehampton, New York, the excitement of observing thunderstorms and other meteorological phenomena has kept him taking measurements for over 80 years. They're taking the weather every day in nice days. It's monotonous. But then you get the thunder and lightning. Bam! Richard G. Hendrickson is a Cooperative Weather Observer, or Co-op, for the National Weather Service, taking voluntary but very important daily weather observations at his home in Bridgehampton. Sounds pretty standard, but there's a catch. At 101 years old, he's been part of the observation record at this location from the very beginning in 1930. We got it from Cornell, set up the weather station, put it together, put up there and put the records in. So far as I know, even when I went to Cornell, there has never been a day missed. For some perspective, back in 1930, the New York, New York Weather Service office was located in the Whitehall Building in Lower Manhattan. And the National Weather Service even had a different name, the United States Weather Bureau. Back in Bridgehampton, the co-op site began with rather humble beginnings. A family friend thought it looked good for weather observations. You look across the fields here of potatoes, and you saw the sunset and like that. And different times of day he would do that, and he wrote several books. And he was a very brilliant man. And uh, he, as a young kid going to eighth grade or first year high school, he thought, he was a good friend of the family, oh, this is a older man thinking, this is a good place to set up a weather station. From there on out, the reasons for continuing to take weather observations were pretty clear. Although at times the task was repetitive, it was a crucial part of the local family farm as well as the agricultural business of Bridgehampton. It was a staple of everyday life. And uh, it's monotonous, but in agriculture or livestock and crops, it's your bread and butter. You have to do it. The persistence of the weather observations at his home has been nothing short of remarkable, especially considering some of the more trying times, including the great New England hurricane of 1938. Limbs on the trees are blowing the leaves are off. Pretty soon the roof on the building houses was starting to raise up and the pylon that supports them, the four by four timbers, were leaving the ground about that much and coming down. Well, we closed up and uh, <clears throat> uh, the professors from Cornell went down the street and stayed where they were staying. We went in the house and the other kids went on home. And it blew. And the first thing you know, that chicken house was gone. With an incredible forward speed of 47 miles per hour, the hurricane slammed into eastern Long Island on September 21st as a Category 3 on the Saffir-Simpson scale. Powerful winds well over 100 miles per hour and destructive storm surge devastated communities across Long Island and into New England out in the field where we had raised our young stock from baby chicks up until five months of age when they became, started to lay an egg and we put the nice selected ones in the laying out. Those buildings were all gone. Two of the big laying houses up on the hill were gone. There were five other large laying houses in back of the barn in a row. Eight, seven, eight, and nine were gone. Those three were gone. There was no orchard, no trees left on the orchard. It is a way that you started life all over again. 
Sadly, the storm resulted in hundreds of fatalities, thousands of destroyed homes and buildings, and tens of thousands left homeless. The rapid speed and extreme nature of the storm caught many locals off guard. Well, uh, that day we had never heard of other than reading in a history book of way back colonial time of a hurricane. This down south, you don't have them up north here. The storm surge and force of the battering waves created several new inlets along the local barrier islands, including Shinnecock Inlet, which remains today. And in total, the storm resulted in several billion dollars of damage when adjusted for inflation. You had to clean up everything. The cows were in being milked. What was you going to do with the milk? The roads were plugged up, trees down, or like that. Buildings bottom side up, a building smashed. And it was, I would say, it was at least three days that your mind was in a terrible condition. This came to your mind, you got to do this. Uh, what can you do for that? And it, you had to stop and think on just one thing. However, despite the catastrophic nature of the storm, life and the weather observations continued on. But we lived through it. And you, you made each day the best you could under those conditions of what you had, what you needed, or what you had to do. While the farm has been sold away since, the house and an impressive array of antiques, such as his collection of wartime cannons, have stood the test of time. Still, over the years since those first observations back in 1930, the science of meteorology has changed dramatically, including the development of new surface observation platforms. For example, today a New England pilot project weather station sits just to the south on the property of Richard's son. Nonetheless, if you ask Richard Sr. how his observation methods have changed over the years, he'll tell you the same thing. Not a bit. There may be some things that have changed from a new experimental station or something, and uh, if I've heard of them, it's passed my mind, but I, I never, no, everything's the same as it did, 1930. Still today, in addition to the data provided by other cooperative observers, Richard's data are recorded and entered at the local weather service office and disseminated through various products. The consistent record has made the Bridgehampton site an integral part of the area's surface network. With such a wealth of experiences to call upon, Richard has a truly unique perspective on the local weather. But he'll be the first to admit that there's always more to understand. You're always learning from someone else. Nobody knows it all. You can always learn. It's a philosophy that has been and continues to be at the backbone of Richard's incredible efforts as a cooperative weather observer for the National Weather Service.